in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's Gospel, we hear about these Greeks that come and say something to Philip and some of the other disciples. They make this statement, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. I think most preachers could preach on that phrase for the rest of their career. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. There are so many angles that we could look at this statement from, but I propose two. One, our expectations, that we are these Greeks that come to the disciples and say, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. What are our expectations that we bring week by week, day by day, to our walk with God as we desire to see the Christ, to experience Jesus? What are our expectations? Realistic expectations, but also ones that aren't so realistic. But I think that is one angle that we can look at this and kind of work on looking into ourselves and what is it we wish to see. And then there's another angle that I'd like to spend a little more time on is that people come to us, to the church, to this community of St. John's saying that same thing. We wish to see Jesus. And the question I have for myself and for you is, what are we showing them? As people move into this wondering, especially during this year when we've had so much time, so much time to reflect and wonder and question what it means to be a church, what it means to be a place that primary job is to show the world Jesus, to be Jesus' hands and feet in the world. It's interesting because so often in history, church has been set up as this thing, that this institution that has all the answers and that all you need to do is come and sign on the dotted line, say a few creeds, say a few prayers, and you get the golden ticket. And yet, if you look at the life and ministry of Jesus, that's not really what he talks about. He talks about love, loving God with all that we have and loving our neighbor as ourself. He talks about mercy, how we care for the least, the lost, and the last, not only out there, but even within our own selves. And forgiveness, 70 times seven, which is basically a pretty infinite number. It's not just 490. So this love, mercy, and forgiveness, how are we showing this to the world? I have to say that I got kind of frustrated this week um, when I read some of the news reports coming out of the Vatican about its inability to bless same-sex unions or marriages. And it took me back to a conversation I had in my first year in the priesthood almost 20 years ago. And it was with Susie Wolf and Holmes Wolf. Susie, devout Episcopalian, she was an archivist at Calvary Episcopal Church in Shadyside, which is a suburb of Pittsburgh, where I was curate. And she invited me over for lunch and her husband, a devout Roman Catholic, Holmes, about 80 years old, and I was about 30. And I walked into their home, and they're just lovely, good people. And 20 years ago, the issue of human sexuality um, within the church, especially within the Diocese of Pittsburgh, was a hot topic, to say the least. And I can remember sitting down at their table, and Holmes looked at me with this way that he could look at me. Such a kind man, but sharp as a tack and definitely um, did not suffer, fool, suffer fools gladly. And he said, so what do you think about this blessing of same-sex marriages or unions? Oh, wow. What a loaded question. 
Well, in the rabbinic tradition, I learned that questions answered with questions by time. And so I said, I don't know. What do you think? And he laughed. He laughed this gusto because here's this devout Roman Catholic that I wasn't sure where or how I knew him, but I didn't know him that well. And he said something to me in such a whimsical kind of open way that it changed me. Not necessarily my opinion because I shared his opinion, but it changed me and what we show one another. And he said, well, Rob, I find it difficult to understand that the church will bless just about anything. Yes, we bless man and wife, you know, you know, husband and wife. But we also bless animals. We'll bless boats. We'll bless motorcycles. We'll bless inanimate objects. We'll bless just about anything. But when it comes to two people in love, we suddenly have to put on the brakes. Wow. I saw Jesus that day, incarnate in Holmes and Susie in their hospitality. They shared with me this openness to understanding that maybe God's way is bigger than us. Maybe that this understanding of blessing, which he went on to talk about, the understanding that comes from our Jewish ancestors is not that we do anything magic with our hands once we're ordained. When we bless, we are simply pointing out where God already is. This understanding of blessing is such a broad understanding, so much bigger than this idea of magic fingers and that somehow it is just for a few but rather it is for all of creation to bless, to point out where we see Jesus, where we see love, mercy, and forgiveness. So as we ponder what it means to be church in the year 2021, as we wrestle with the issues of the day, whether it be human sexuality, gender, whatever, race. These are all really important issues. Let us remember to look at it through the lens of Jesus' life, through the lens of love, mercy, and forgiveness. This idea of showing each other Jesus and beautifully said in a sermon that I remember and keep giving to you over and over is that where have you seen Jesus this week? Who was Jesus to you? Like Holmes was Jesus to me that day. We wish to see Jesus. What are we expecting to see? And what are we showing to others? May we have courage to let our reflection of God's love, mercy, and forgiveness that resides in us shine brightly to the world. And let us resist the temptation to have the answers, but rather to welcome the questions, to welcome the conversations, to open the doors so that all people can see Jesus. Amen.